Today, we're finally taking a look at undervolting for the RTX 30 series GPUs. That means huge reductions in power, thermals, and noise at practically the same gaming performance as stock. We've seen just how effective this can be for other GPUs from previous generations. And honestly, the new Ampere architecture isn't anything too different or special when it comes to voltage and clock speeds. But there is a difference in just how much power can be reduced. So Let's take a look at what you need to know because this is definitely worth doing. A quick brief on GPU undervolting for those who aren't aware of what this is or what the point of it is. It's simply reducing the amount of voltage that your GPU is running at, but at the same time, not reducing the clock speed that it would naturally sit at, at least not by a significant amount. The result is an identical gaming experience to what you'd have out of the box, but with a much better GPU thermal and power behavior. In some cases, particularly with AMD GPUs, the net result can actually be a performance increase, seeing as lower voltage will allow the GPU to pull more current and run at a higher clock speed for a given power limit. The reasons that you'd want to undervolt your GPU are fairly simple. Who wouldn't want a quieter and cooler gaming system with the only trade-off being five to 10 minutes of your own time setting a profile in MSI Afterburner. This is especially useful in small form factor cases or custom loops with limited radiator volume. Of course, though, you'll still get exceptional results in your average mid tower case. Now, I will note that for most of the RTX 3080 and 3090s that I've seen, undervolting is not entirely necessary from purely a thermal reduction point of view because these GPUs seem to run fairly thermally efficient despite chugging back a ton of power. Most of you, for example, will stay below 80 degrees C on most of the RTX 3080 and 3090s out there with a normal case and ambient room temperature. Still though, we all want a cooler, quieter, and more efficient gaming system, so let's take a look at how you can do that. Undervolting is fairly simple. Just download an open MSI Afterburner, press Control F to bring up the voltage and frequency curve, drag down the top of the curve to your desired clock speed while holding Alt, line that up with the voltage that you want to run it at, and press confirm. And that's it, that's now your undervolt profile. Of course, you'll want to test this out and optimize it a bit further and save a profile so that this is actually loaded when you boot your PC. For a more in-depth guide, I will leave a link down below. But what we really wanna know is what voltage and frequencies are actually good and which ones work. So let's start by looking at an optimized curve here for the RTX 3080 and 3090 to see roughly what minimum voltages would look like for these GPUs at a range of clock speeds. Here I've tested the lowest voltage required to hold as low as 1750 megahertz stable all the way up to 2000 megahertz. Of course, higher frequencies will require higher voltages. And the reason that I've just used a single line plot here for both the 3080 and 3090 is that they basically require identical minimum voltages at certain frequencies. So undervolting for the 3080 and 3090 will look very, very similar. The only variant is going to come down to your specific GPU and the silicon quality. The orange data point represents what the RTX 3080 FE naturally sits at, which is around 1920 megahertz and 1026 millivolts. And green represents the 3090, which at stock settles in at around 1865 and 980 millivolts. These two points are quite far away from our optimized data points in blue, so we're potentially looking at huge savings in power and thermals. Roughly, you're looking at around 100 millivolts less than what the GPU's default voltage and frequency curve would set. And this does result in some pretty massive savings in power, whereas the RTX 3080 FE would typically sit at its power limit of 320 watts while at 1920 megahertz, we can achieve that same clock speed at over 50 watts less. Or if you prefer to sit at the same power level, you can achieve an 80 megahertz overclock with no increase in power, thermals, or noise. Now, usually I don't recommend underclocking in addition to reducing the voltage as I don't like the idea of trading performance, but some of you might be willing to make that trade. Below 1900 megahertz, for example, you can reduce power by over 100 watts and your gaming experience is likely going to feel the same. Similar story with the RTX 39 absolutely huge savings in power here 
And again, you can achieve more performance at the same power consumption if that's your thing too. Now, reduced power is cool and all, but the main noticeable benefit is lower GPU temperature and fan speed. The great part is that it's really up to you to decide how much clock speed you're willing to trade for a quieter GPU. I think most of you will be interested in an undervolt profile of around 1850 MHz. Therefore, an RTX 3080, you're looking at around a 5 degree drop along with fan speeds that are over 200 150 RPM lower for both fans. You will also notice coil wind and the electrical noise from your card reduce along with that lower power draw. In terms of how much gaming performance you'll be trading if you do underclock in addition to undervolting, it will depend on the game and resolution. So I'd encourage you to do your own testing in the games that you actually play. Most of the time though, a clock speed reduction between 50 and 100 megahertz is not going to impact your gaming experience, apart from the reduced thermals and noise coming from your PC, which I think we'd all agree is a very fair trade-off. Again, it will depend on the specific game and resolution. For for example, in Rainbow Six Siege, there was a larger difference at 1440p than at 4K. Generally, I'd recommend most of you looking to do this with NVIDIA Ampere, Turing, and Pascal GPUs. Set something in the ballpark of around 1850 MHz and 860 millivolts. There, you will get quite a noticeable reduction in power and thermals, with no real impact on gaming performance. I will mention that this testing was done with the Founders Edition GPUs, which do not have a factory over clock in place, but if you are planning on doing this with an aftermarket card that has something like a plus 100 megahertz factory overclock, you might want to choose an undervolt profile a little bit higher up the ladder just so you're not trading off too much clock speed compared to stock. So there we have it, some pretty solid results with the RTX 3080 and 3090, and you could definitely apply this to the 3070 that is going to be released very, very soon. And honestly, not very different results to what we've seen from Pascal and Turing. Overall, you are looking at very similar frequencies and voltages. And personally, I'm really interested in doing this for my ITX custom loop when I finally get my RTX 3090 reference card when that finally ships. So do stay tuned for that. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.